Says critics say they're the latest efforts by Florida Republican and elected officials to leverage state resources to try to block abortion rights measure. Moves which some de Democratic officials argue could violate state laws against voter intimidation. Ron DeSantis has repeatedly used state powers to interfere with a citizen-led process to get reproductive freedom on the ballot. This is their latest desperate attempt before Election Day. By the way, here's the crazy part. You got to remember, this is direct democracy. Remember how I always talk about, uh, you know, if even if you're not going to vote for any particular person, make sure to vote for the ballot measures because that's a way that you circumvent the, the politicians, right? You don't have to you go through the politicians in order to get policy passed. And that's the beautiful part about it. But they're trying to interfere with your ability to have a direct say over how your lives are ran. Ron DeSantis is dangerous for democracy. And I'm not saying it like a liberal war, like, oh my God, he's a dangerous to democracy. No, this dude is dangerous for democracy. Ron DeSantis has decided to make this task force that uses the police to intimidate potential voters. And it's happening this year for Amendment 4, which is a uh, which is an abortion bill that will increase uh, this it from a six week uh, ban to a abortion bill that uh, allows abortion up to viability, fetal viability, fetal viability, as we talked about with the uh, Amendment 4 is typically about four, 24 weeks, right? So basically, Florida will be going back to what it had before the six-week six day. And so now Ron DeSantis decided to create a task force that would be police officers going around the state to harass voters, essentially. Uh, so when everybody talk, when we talk about a police state, we're talking about a policing even voters for their decisions. So let's get into this. This should concern you no matter where you fall on the political spectrum. This is fascism. Anyone that is trying to commit fraud in this. Anyone that is trying to commit fraud in this process absolutely should be held accountable. Breaking news tonight, Governor DeSantis just confirmed the state is using the election police force to question people who signed an abortion petition. Tonight, NBC2 chief political reporter Dave Elias talked to a Fort Myers man who says an investigator showed up at his home armed with personal inv information after he signed a petition in favor of Amendment 4, which guarantees a woman's right to abortion in Florida. Isaac Maneschi said on Facebook that he got a knock on the door from a man carrying a folder with about 10 pages of his personal information, including a petition he signed. He said, quote, it was obvious to me that a significant effort was exerted to determine if I indeed had signed the petition, a petition he indeed signed to get abortion rights on the ballot. Unsure, though, why his signature was being questioned. So this really is part of an insidious operation of Governor Ron DeSantis and his cronies to silence people's voices. State Representative Anna Eskamani claims that the state is trying to prove signatures may have been gathered fraudulently. What point is this because it's already on the ballot and in most cases, I'm sure, has already been printed? Well, this is all about political theater. The reality is that the Republican Party of Florida already has television ads out right now accusing them before of being fraudulent. Governor Ron DeSantis today in Miami confirming and defending the investigation. Anyone who submitted a petition accurately that's a valid voter is totally within their rights to do it. They're not investigating that. What they're investigating is fraudulent petitions. Uh, I visit. If you signed a petition, I did, for this law to be on the ballot, 
if police actually came to you, came to your home to question you about a petition you signed and to make sure that it's it's valid, right? Don't they already have contingencies in, with that in place without police having to come to your, your home? I mean, if you are a registered voter, then why not? They should already have the, all that information in the system. And yet they're sending the cops to knock on your door. And the funny part is, I don't see this drive being used for, for either Amendment 1, which talks about, uh, you know, making partisanship, uh, uh, you know, having part political parties uh, shown on ballots for school board elections. I don't see it for Amendment 2, which talks about uh, allowing for allowing for the, const the state constitution to say that hunting is a right. I don't see it for Amendment Three when it comes to marijuana recreational marijuana legalization. I don't see it for Amendment Five, which talks about the homestead uh, tax exemption. I don't see it for Amendment Six, which is going to talk about uh, public financing of elections. I don't see it for any of those. But when it comes to this one issue, oh, well, we got to make sure that the petitions are, are, are correct on it. We got we to, gotta, uh, you know, shake down the voters to make sure that they actually did the right thing. This is a police state, man. That's what this is. I don't care where you fall on the spectrum politically, you should be against this. And people will say, well, these people, they're going to be uh, voting. They're using dead people to vote. They're using their dogs to vote. If a person is dead, doesn't the state have access to their, uh, their death records, their death certificate and things like that? If the person died, My goodness, they'll do anything, anything. All right. So, fraudulent petitions. Uh, I visited Lee County Supervisor of Elections, Tommy Doyle. Were you made aware of this, and, and, and what do you know about it? I only aware of what I read in the paper. I had no idea that there was any type of investigation. Should you have been made aware of it so that if you start getting phone calls, you can at least answer if it's legit? <sighs> that would be nice. Yeah. If we could have uh, told uh, that that's legit, uh, law enforcement is doing an investigation. At least two people have come forward to say they were questioned about a petition fraud. It's just shameful behavior. It's it's an abuse of power. It's It's corruption. And I really do hope Floridians see through it. With just weeks to go before voters start voting on the matter, which the governor opposes. Now, if you get that knock on the door and it's someone who claims to be the state election police, you're going to want to make sure you see a badge and make sure they identify themselves. In Fort Myers, Dave Elias, NBC2. All right. So that's what's going on here in Florida. Now... One of the things I think that's important for us to keep in mind is that there's already contingencies in place to make sure that these signatures are valid, things like that, right? If they're invalid, then you just toss them out. But they were valid. And they passed the threshold and it got on the ballot. And now he wants to try to check to see if they threw it out, especially for Amendment 4. But the question is, it's like, why about, there's there's literally five other amendments on the bill that I don't see them t checking out for. 
And even then, if the signature is invalid, then they discover that when going over the signatures. Let's go to this article. Because when I saw this, and shout out to my friend, Mike, who shared this with me. This was a wild story. So, it says police are questioning Florida voters about signing an abortion rights ballot petition. So, it says state police are showing up at Florida voters' homes to question them about signing the petition to get an abortion rights amendment on the ballot in November. And a state health care agency has launched a website targeting the ballot initiative with politically charged language. Critics say they're, they're the latest efforts by Florida Republican elected officials to leverage state resources to try to block the abortion rights measure moves which some Democratic officials argue could violate state laws against voter intimidation. Now, here's the thing. This, right, for now, is against the abortion uh, rights amendment that is set to be passed or, you know, voted on this November. But, what if it's a different law? What if it's another law that it's more uh, uh, akin to our rights as workers, our rights to housing, our rights to healthcare? What if we vote on something that's really important, that is something that we all want collectively, but then we have the police knocking at our door? and essentially intimidating us for voting for our own interests as voters. This goes beyond abortion rights. This is about your rights as a voter. And you should not be intimidated for making your voice known within your state. This is a very steep and slippery slope that I see Ron DeSantis on. And it feels like a larger, more statewide version of the Okoe massacre. It's like, how far is he willing to go? Using the state to hamper people's voice? That's fascistic. It says critics say they're the latest efforts by Florida Republican elected officials to leverage state resources to try to block abortion rights measure, moves which some de Democratic officials argue could violate state laws against voter intimidation. Ron DeSantis has repeatedly used state powers to interfere with the citizen led process to get reproductive freedom on the ballot. This is their latest desperate attempt before election day. By the way, here's the crazy part. You got to remember, this is direct democracy. Remember how I always talk about, uh, you know, if even if you're not going to vote for any particular person, make sure to vote for the ballot measures because that's a way that you circumvent the, the politicians, right? You don't have to you go through the politicians in order to get policy passed. And that's the beautiful part about it but they're trying to interfere with your ability to have a direct say over how your lives are ran. That is, oh, this is an actual threat to democracy here in Florida. Like I said, this goes beyond this one amendment. This could be used as a tool for voter intimidation for anything and everything. Let's say we 
I'm just throwing a hypothetical out there. But what if we vote on a universal health care ballot measure for Florida? And let's say it's set to get 65, 70 percent of the vote. Right. We have a threshold of 60 percent, but we get above that. And they know it. Well, what's the best way to prevent people from voting? Right? Well, voter intimidation. All right. They will intimidate you so that you end up voting against your own interests. They use fear, which is the tactic which both Democrats and Republicans use. Democrats will use a more roundabout way to do it, right? They'll say, well, if you don't vote for us, well, then the Republicans are going to ruin your life. This is why they discourage people from voting third party. But the Democrats do it. Just ask Jill Stein, especially what happened in places like Nevada, where they're getting her off the ballot. And they're doing it in Georgia as well. Think about it. You know, and the, the issue is, is this, that's what this is. Let's continue. It says the ballot initiative known as Amendment 4 would enshrine abortion rights as Florida in Florida law. If approved by 60% of voters, the procedure would remain legal until the fetus is viable, which I said was 24 weeks, as determined by the patient's health care provider. Isaac uh, Menash, one of nearly a million people who signed a petition to get the measure on the ballot, said a law enforcement officer knocked on his door last week in Lee County in Southwest Florida to ask him about signing Nearly a million people signed a petition. So if they start intimidating people, that means they're denying the right of a million people to their right to have this law or this potential amendment on the ballot for them to vote on to make their voices heard. Says so the officer said the questioning part was, was part of an investigation to allege petition fraud. The Tampa Bay Times reported. He said, I'm not a person who's going out there protesting for abortion. I just felt strongly and I took the opportunity when a person asked me today, yeah, I'll sign that petition. Critics say the investigation is a brazen attempt to intimidate voters in the country's third largest state from protecting access to abortion. And the latest in a series of efforts by the governor's administration to target Amendment 4. Uh, it says Amendment 4 was placed on the ballot by nearly 1 million Floridians around the state and across party lines who believe that people, not politicians, deserve the freedom to make their own health care decisions. But the state will stop at nothing to keep in place their near total abortion ban. Florida law currently bans most abortions after six weeks of pregnancy before many women even know they're pregnant. Speaking at press Monday in South uh, Florida, DeSantis defended police visiting homes of petition signers and a separate move by a state health care agency to create a website targeting the ballot amendment, saying both are aimed at making sure November's vote is fair. DeSantis signed a law in 2022 creating a state police force dedicated to investigating voter fraud and elections crime. Voter fraud is rare. Says typically occurs in isolated instances and is generally detected. Voter fraud is rare. And you have to be registered as a voter in the state of Florida in order to vote. Hold up. Just give me one second. So I have to have my ID. I have to have my ID, okay, 
my voter registration card. I have to have my voter registration card, which means you have to have your ID in order to be able to get it in the state of Florida, right? Meaning that as a citizen, if I want to go vote on something or if I want to sign a petition, if I'm already registered, guess what? They have that information. So is this police force necessary if it's already in the system? This is anti-democratic. This is fascism. To take your voice away. It says, he said, elections police are going to the homes of people who signed the petitions that got amendment four on the ballot, not to intimidate them, but because questions have been raised about the legitimacy of the signatures. He said the police have found evidence that some of the supposed signatures were from dead people. Anyone who submitted a petition that is valid voter, that's totally within their rights to do it. We are not investigating that. What they're investigating is fraudulent petitions. We know that this is a group that did submit on behalf of dead people. Um, it says a deadline in state law to challenge the validity of signatures has long been passed, but county level election administrators across Florida say they have been receiving requests from state officials to turn over verified petition signatures as part of the state probe. Hang on. Let me ask you this. If Let's say I sign a petition, and after I sign the petition, a week later, I pass away. Should the person who was, you know, petitioning and got my signature, would they be in trouble for submitting that signature because I passed away after signing? That can happen. Um, also, what about laws that the GOP and people like Ron DeSantis would want to pass? Is he investigating signatures for, for instance, for people who signed Amendment 2? Is he investigating them? I don't give a damn thing about Amendment 2 or Amendment 5. Amendment 5 essentially is supported also by the GOP. I don't see people going around going, well, you got to make sure that all the signatures are good for Amendment 5. They're not even doing it for Amendment 3. Oh my gosh, this is crazy, man. This is Mary Jane Arrington, a Democrat who served as supervisor of elections in Osceola County in Central Florida for 16 years, told the Associated Press that she had never received a request like this one before. Arrington said she didn't know what to make of the state's request to review signatures. Her office had already verified. They have already been verified, but yet, they want to review signatures. Uh, it says these are ones that we deem the petition valid, both in completeness and their signature matching what we had on the file for the voter. Arrington said they said they were investigating signature petition fraud. The state's election crime unit has opened up more than 40 investigations into paid petitioner petition gatherers working for the Amendment 4 campaign. According to a letter that the Deputy Secretary of State, Brad McVeigh, sent to the Palm Beach County Supervisor of Elections that was shared with the AP, judges have tossed out previous criminal cases brought by the controversial Office of Election Crimes and Security. 
Meanwhile, a state healthcare agency launched a new website last week targeting Amendment 4, which with a landing page proclaiming that Florida is protecting life and warning, don't let the fear mongers lie to you. DeSantis said that the page created by Florida's Agency for Healthcare Administration is being paid through a budget and department has to do public service announcements. He said the page is not political, but is giving Florida's fa Floridians factual information about the amendment. Everything that's put out is factual, is not electioneering, DeSantis said in news conference. He said, I'm glad they're doing it. Florida is one of the nine states where measures to protect abortion access have qualified to go before voters in 2024. Florida Republicans have been using various other strategies to thwart the state abortion ballot measure. So Ashley Moody, the Florida uh, AG, attempted to use the state Supreme Court to keep abortion off the ballot. Later, abortion right advocates, advocates criticized the financial impact statement meant to be placed on the ballot beside the proposed amendment as an attempt to mislead voters. The state Supreme Court ruled in August to allow the language to remain on the ballot. So, ultimately, it's really just about intimidating voters to go the way that they want versus actual preserving the sanctity of voting, of democracy. Because if it was about preserving the sanctity of democracy, then they would be doing this for other ballots, right? Even if the ballots favored them. But that's not the case. My thing is, is when it comes to what Ron DeSantis is doing, Ron DeSantis is just the opposite side of the coin of the duopoly. They are the more uh, forceful side of the duopoly that will use uh, state violence and state police to, uh, you know, intimidate you into voting the way that they want to, because ultimately, is they have to uh, force your hand in a democratic process. They say they want to be fair, but police coming to your door and questioning you about whether it's valid that you signed this petition, there's systems already in place for that. Hell, the officers could call a person. But that's not what this is. And make no mistake, the Democrats also do, uh, you know, things, uh, some hairy things around elections too. For instance, like taking third parties off the ballot as well. The Florida Democrats do not have clean hands either. This is why I say walk away from both parties, because they both subvert democracy. They may do it in different ways, but they still both subvert democracy. There's more than one way to cook a potato. There's more than one way to subvert democracy. And they both parties do it. This is why. If you are, it's probably a little too late now, but after this election, at the very least, register independent and always focus on the policy to the person and vote your conscience and do not allow yourself to be intimidated by fascistic forces, whether red or blue, anywhere you live in this country. The hell with Ron DeSantis. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here.
want. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.